Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to study the gross and applied anatomy of carotid gland. So watch this video till the end. Major salivary glands, uh, they are in pairs and the name of the glands are parotid, submandibular and the sublingual glands. So today we are going to study about the parotid gland only. So parotid is the largest salivary gland and parotid glands secrete what we saliva which is rich in enzymes such as amylase, proteins such as proline rich proteins and glycoproteins. The superficial portion of the gland it is located subcutaneously in front of the external ear while the deep portion of the gland it is present behind the ramus of the mandible the sensory innervation of this gland is through the auricotemporal nerve, which is a branch of mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The gland is surrounded and protected by a fibrous capsule, also known as parotid capsule. Now, the excretory duct of the parotid gland. The excretory duct of the salivary gland is also known as the Stenson's duct. The excretory duct, it appears at the anterior border of the gland and then it passes horizontally across the masseter muscle and then turns inward at the anterior border of the masseter. At the anterior border of the masseter, it pierces the buccinator muscle and opens into the oral cavity opposite the crown of the upper second molar tooth. The opening of the excretory duct, it is protected by a fold of tissue known as parotid papilla. Sometimes patients, they are confused because sometimes the parotid papilla is larger in size, so they think that it is a pathology. Actually, it is a normal landmark present in our oral cavity. Now, accessory parotid tissue is sometimes associated with a excretory duct also known as Stenson's duct. So sometimes the parotid tissue is associated uh, with Stenson's duct just anterior to the superficial portion. So here in this picture you can see this is the accessory parotid tissue that is closely associated with the Stenson's duct. Now, the blood and nerve supply of the parotid gland. The blood and the venous drainage is through the branches of the external carotid artery as they passes through the gland, while the venous drainage is through the retromandibular vein. Now, the parasympathetic supply is through the glossopharyngeal nerve, and this glossopharyngeal nerve, it stimulates secretion from the parotid gland. The parotid gland, it is associated uh, with the peripheral branches of the facial nerve. The facial nerve, it exits through the stylomastoid foramen and enter the parotid gland. Here you can see in this picture and it gives five branches that exit through the anterior and the lower border of the parotid gland. And these branches are temporal zygomatic, buccal, marginal mandibular, and cervical. So these branches, they supply the muscles of the face. So during maxillofacial surgery or in case of any trauma, there is a chance that these nerves could be damaged and it may cause the paralysis of the muscles of the face and that, that paralysis can be for some time if the uh, damage is temporary. Uh, uh, that damage can be reversible if the extent of the trauma is less or it may be permanent. In, and in some cases, when the local anesthesia is administered uh, for inferior alveolar nerve block, sometimes accidentally uh, the operator, they inject the local anesthesia within the parotid gland. In that case, uh, there is a temporary paralysis occur. 
there are several other important structure that pass uh, from within the gland and those structures they include external carotid artery and the retromandibular vein now the development of the parotid gland the parotid gland development is divided into two stages one is the prenatal development and the second is the postnatal development the prenatal development it begins at 4 to 6 week of embryonic life and the secretory NPs and the ducts they attain maturity during the last two months of gestation so the beginning is at 4 to 6 week and the final secretory NPs and the ducts they develop up to second month of gestation now after birth there is a postnatal development and the postnatal development starts after birth and it continues up to the two years of age and what happens in the postnatal development the proportion of the snr cells or the secretory cells they increases and the volume proportion of the ducts connective tissue and the vascular element it decreases so thank you very much for watching if you have any comments any suggestions or feedback please write it in the comments so thank you very much for watching stay blessed